good morning to to all to all of you. Yeah. It's an enormous pleasure to being with you today, showing these these results. Uh, so I'm José Pedro from Emia Silva, um, making you uh, the first part of the presentation. Then we will have Professor Silvia Rocha from uh, Aveiro University showing you results uh, obtained so far. So this is a partnership that we, we started last year. So we have almost one year of, of partnership uh, 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 altogether. And today, uh, the subject that we will talk, it's about pairing wine and stoppers. An old issue with new achievements, and uh, new achievements that we are obtaining with this uh, partnership. So, uh, the, the, the presentation will be divided in two parts, as you, as you already understood. Um, the first part, I will, I will show you the main objectives of this uh, partnership um, that obviously contain closure, closure trials uh, with uh, the goal the main goal to understand what is the impact of uh, the different closures that are of, uh, available in the market in different kinds of wines. So uh, a disclaimer that is important to do is not, that his goal is not today to, to say what is the best, the best uh, closure, it is to uh, have scientific review, scientific data, so that winemakers, in the end of the day, can make the best decision towards the wine they are producing. Then we will uh, um, talk about the bottlings we have made, so four bottlings, and we will show you what kind of wines we are working. Um, passing to sensory results, uh, uh, and then I pass the word to uh, Professor Silvia to uh, uh, show you results obtained in uh, our very university. So, Main objectives, obviously, we start with the R&D overview, so uh, lecturing very well what is available in uh, uh, the scientific review. Um, so we want clearly to uh, give results for something that we uh, think that we need to reinforce in the literature, that is match sensory analysis made by winemakers, by expert panels, with chemical data obtained in those wines so that we can match the information all together and understand very well why winemakers uh, find differences between different kinds of closures. Uh, with that, obviously, we are evaluating many things. So, distortion of oxygen that comes from different kinds of, of closures. In case of corks, obviously, this is very, very important and something that we find uh, most commonly in literature. Then, uh, uh, volatile compounds and phenolic compounds as well. Distortion that comes from cork and different kind of closures. So this is the second main aspect that we will as well overview. Chemical uh, uh, parameters. So uh, the, the main one that all, all you know for sure. So sulfur, uh, uh, free sulfur uh, and total absorbances, acidity and so on and so on. In the end of the day, we want, obviously, to construct predictive modules to evaluate the evolution of the wine with different kind of uh, closures. And finally, uh, uh, in afterwards, we will uh, uh, reach in a stage where we will be able to make some kind of uh, analogical preconization uh, to different kind of, uh, uh, of wines. So this analogical preconization will have in uh, basis uh, uh, the wine segment. This is kind of an objective that we will look in two or three years' time. Uh, the type of wine, the aromatic expression that we can, that we can uh, uh, regarding the evolution of wines with different closures, uh, construct here as well this, this kind of uh, uh, databases. Distortion of oxygen, commonly known as OTRs, and finally making here a cork preconization that, uh, as you know, even today we uh, are more focused in other things such as uh, presence or absence or of TCA and some kind of matching, matching the information just with OTRs. We want to make here a big overview with all this data to our analogical preconization. So passing to the bottling and samplings that we have done so far, 
uh, I would say in the last two, three years. So uh, to these kind of bottlings and the closure trials, obviously, as you can imagine, the wine homogeneity is mandatory. So we cannot expect that in these kind of tests to have heterogeneity, heterogeneity that comes rather from corks but from other things. So we obviously want to avoid this kind of variabilities. So all the bottles of sa and samplings must have same conditions, uh, storage as well. So the corking and capsuling must obviously not present mechanical damages that uh, uh, once different kind of closures have different kind of physical and mechanical parameters, as you, as you, as, as you can imagine. So the oxygenation literature say to us that in the, the bottling we can have um, apports of oxygen that can go up to eight milligrams from one to eight milligrams per bottle of oxygen. So obviously we cannot have this kind of heterogeneity and we, we, we avoid these kind of things. And then the sampling that we accord with a very university that we uh, need to representativity and statistical uh, uh, representativity to, to, to this uh, data that we will obtain in terms of volatile composition and phenolic composition as well. Then we pass to, obviously, the first step is tasting sessions with expert, expert panels uh, and uh, in the end of the day we pass all this information with sensory and uh, chemical data with Aveiro uh, 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 to have the big, the big picture. So the first, one of the first, the first white wines that we uh, bottled was in Alsace, uh, a wine from 2020. We will show you already results of sensory, sensory data after seven and 15 months. It is a monovarietal wine, a Riesling, and we uh, bottled with uh, three microagglomerated corks. So obviously we will not have here commercial names. So uh, microagglomerated one, two, and three. We bottled as well with a synthetic closure and a natural cork stopper. Uh, the expert panel was composed by 10 uh, people and the sensory analysis were by ranking of oxidative character. The second, the second example will be a red wine uh, made in, in Douro. As you know, Douro is most commonly made by blends. So this is a blend with Tinta Amarela, Toriga uh, National and Toriga Franca. Uh, we have results here with already uh, volatile composition and phenolic composition as well, uh, antioxidant capacity. Uh, uh, and it is a wine uh, uh, that was bottled in 2020, so we will show you results after 35 months. Uh, closures used was a micro cork uh, versus a natural cork stopper. And the expert panel composed by 10 people with sensory analysis of ranking of oxidative character. Second example, so a red, a red uh, uh, second example of a red wine in Burgenland, Austria where we have a blend of four varieties, Blau Frankisch, uh, Zweikelt, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, and we bottled with two uh, microagglomerated cork stoppers, a natural cork and a screw cap with uh, a tin saran uh, liner. Uh, the expert panel composed by seven people, and we will sh show you as well results of sensory, sensory, uh, I don't know where, why we have here the... Regia. I will try to, oh, okay, perfect. So uh, we are as well doing this in uh, sparkling wine. So we have a partnership with, with the Champagne uh, Maison where we have bottled uh, three kinds of uh, uh, cork stoppers. So a micro agglomerated, uh, two disc cork stopper and the three, three discs cork stopper and uh, the expert panel composed by 12 people. So we will show you as well. No, here we don't have results. We will have results e available in uh, July. Passing to uh, something that is quite important in this kind of study. So the, all the panels that are used in the sensory analysis are made from expert uh, panels. So people that are uh, accustomed to this kind of, uh, uh, of tastings. Nevertheless, we uh, have internally, with, when we have people from uh, our Emia Silva or, M, uh, or Aveiro University that will come to, 
to uh, tastings, we have uh, here some um, training that it is obviously uh, mandatory because we want to have concordance in the results. So the panel is uh, trained. Uh, this is an example where, for instance, for solving Omblin, Semillon, we go to the literature to, say, to see what are references, sensory references from different attributes, and the panel is as well trained uh, uh, with that. So we, afterwards, we compile all the information with softwares that are available, such as panel stat, panel check to see the concordance of the panel with statistical data. And if we have non-concordant results, obviously, then we will, in the next sections, uh, make some formation that will be adapted to those attributes and to those, to those non-concordant results. So the first results uh, that I, I am showing you in, in, about sensory performance, uh, we have here results of seven and 15 months that uh, we put here uh, in the same diapositive, the results for you to see something that is very, very interesting. So is that after the time plays a very important role when we have here different kind of closures. So first thing is that we see differences between different kind of closures. And uh, the second thing is that after some time, the results change. So we cannot not have here uh, some kind of narrative that uh, uh, the closures will have all the same, the same behavior during the time because we see that is not, not like that. What we see here is that, uh, for instance, after seven months, uh, the oxidation character were, was more um, important in uh, uh, cork, natural cork stopper and the micro um, one with synthetic as well. But after 15 months, what we saw is that we have as well in the, in the case of micro three, some kind of more oxidative character and curiously the synthetics stay less oxidative in, in, in this period time. So, but uh, 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 then we will have results of volatile uh, composition that will consubstantiate this information. In the case of uh, uh, Doro blend, what we saw after 35 months is that in the ortonasal analysis, uh, similar results, so no differences at all. But in the retronasal, curiously, we saw differences with more oxidative character in natural cork stopper. Second disclaimer that is very important. The goal here is not to say once again if oxidative is better or worse. Obviously, in the second phase, we will see pref we will evaluate the preferences of the panel. But in this in this stage, what we want to see is evaluate differences. If they exist, explain why, and then we will pass to uh, uh, this kind of analysis of preferences. Finally, we have here the Burgenland, where we where we saw as well in the first analysis after three three months that uh, uh, um, in ortonasal analysis, the results were similar, but in the retronasal, screw cap and uh, uh, microagglomerated two presented differences where the microagglomerated presented more oxidative character than the uh, screw cap. Results of volatile composition will have sooner, not to, we will not uh, present you that today. So with that, I'll pass the, the word to Professor Silvio. Vi ricordo intanto che potete cominciare a porre le domande già adesso eh, per la fine del modulo. Please. Yeah, okay. So, good morning uh, and thank you for your presence. So, um, this company, Emia Silva, contact uh, the University of uh, Aveiro, my, my lab. We are specialized in the characterization of biomolecules from natural products, namely from cork, from uh, wine, and, and different uh, types of beverage. Uh, and we establish a strategy to go uh, further. Uh, it, it was very important to know the starting points, so the samples, the, the, and namely the, the sensorial analysis. We also look for the literature. Uh, decided to use advanced equipments because these matrices are very complex and it's important to, to study them in detail. And it's also important to use uh, statistical uh, multivariate tools because uh, actually we produce a, a large 
large um, set of different domains of information. Uh, so the, the, the starting point uh, for us was these um, two trials, so the, the Douro red wine uh, and the, the Riesling. We, we started with uh, these two, two types of, uh, of wines. Uh, we look for the sensory uh, analysis uh, and uh, for the case of the red wine uh, as well as uh, the case of um, the Riesling, it was uh, possible to observe some uh, differences uh, regarding the sensorial analysis, uh, namely uh, higher uh, oxidation uh, level for uh, natural uh, cork stoppers, but for the case of the um, Riesling, uh, there are also other micro-agglomerated uh, stoppers that uh, may contribute with some uh, more uh, oxidation character uh, of the wine. So, uh, as you know, to, to understand uh, these uh, um, sensorial differences or to evaluate or to, to try to understand the sensorial perception of a product, namely of the, the wine, it's not... We have to, to study different uh, parameters because actually the, the aroma are, are produced from these volatile compounds, this cloud of volatile compounds, but actually this, this, the release of these compounds also depend on the non-volatile compounds, on the, the retention, retention and the interaction uh, effects between the volatile and non-volatile. Uh, so we have to, to, to control several parameters, also the, the pH, for example, of the, the wine, it's really important. And then the, the perception is another thing, but it's also very complex and are dependent on the, the individual, even related with a lot, a lot of physiologic conditions, even the, the microbiota of the mouth. So there are something very complex to understand the sensorial perception of a wine. Uh, we also uh, realize that it's very, very important to understand and to study in detail, in detail the, 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 these volatile compounds because actually, for example, this, this novel prize of medicine uh, from uh, 2004 uh, unveiled that there are some uh, specificity between the, the receptors of volatile compounds in nasal cavity and, and the, the volatiles. So not all uh, the, the, the volatile compounds uh, present the, the, the same uh, interaction or present uh, this uh, specificity for the receptors of our uh, nasal cavity. Uh, and in some cases, there are some combinator, they, they interact in a combinatory way, way to our uh, nasal uh, receptors. So it's really important to, to study the detail of this volatile uh, composition, in, even to study the compounds present in very, very trace amount. We also look for the literature because there are a lot of literature related with this impact of different stoppers on the characteristics of the, the wine. The literature is really dispersed because some Manus, uh, papers are more related with uh, alterations in, uh, or the impact on volatile compositions, are on, volatile, on phenolic compounds, also in the, the, the OTR. So there are several uh, literature, very important. I think it's very important to, 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 for us as a, a starting point and to look uh, what are happening. It's, uh, the, the literature in some cases uh, showed some uh, influence of the, the variety. Uh, on other cases, it's not really um, conclusive, the, the impact of variety on this uh, interaction with the, the cork stopper or, or the stoppers in general. So we decided to establish a holistic 
uh, way to, to look for or to understand these uh, differences uh, observed uh, at sensorial uh, level. So we decided to, to study different uh, parameters, volatile components, phenolics, chromatic parameters, uh, acidity, so um, the ox uh, sulfur dioxide, so antioxidant activity. So we are studying different um, parameters. Um, you, we are, as Pedro showed, we are characterizing different uh, wines from different varieties are blended, uh, different uh, stoppers, so this, this study is uh, under progress, but right now uh, I can show uh, some results. For example, for the Douro red wine, uh, we have results related with uh, these uh, uh, physical chemical uh, parameters uh, and uh, regarding different uh, bottles uh, and the replicates from different parameters, it not uh, observed any statistical significant differences. Um, also, we control the chromatic parameters, and regarding this, is not observed any significant uh, statistical um, differences between uh, uh, wines sealed with uh, these two types of uh, stoppers. Uh, regarding the, the Riesling, uh, and the, on this case we use, uh, we use these uh, three types of stoppers, uh, only uh, significant uh, differences obs uh, observed uh, regarding the, the physical chemical parameters, only a slight difference between, uh, between the statistical significance was observed for uh, pH uh, regarding the uh, synthetic uh, stopper. Uh, and uh, for Riesling, we can observe some uh, differences uh, related with the uh, microagglomerated B and also synthetic. Uh, we can see that the, the differences are not too, 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 too high, but with the statistical significance. So the, the wine sealed with synthetic stopper present higher color intensity, and this micro B show some differences related to the others. For, for the analysis of volatile compounds, uh, so right now I'm described the different results and the idea is then to, to, to analyze all the results uh, together. Uh, for the ana analysis of volatile uh, compounds, we decided to use this, this uh, equipment, GC times GC. It's a very uh, sensitive uh, and powerful uh, equipment because actually it seems like two chromatographs. Uh, connected uh, and uh, we can do uh, a first, in a single injection, we can do a first separation of uh, compounds on using this column and then the, both columns are connected and we can do another separation. So, and we can achieve this type of 3D chromatograms. Uh, actually, this, this type of analysis is very powerful. You can obtain this this type of chromatograms, 3D chromatograms, where you can detect uh, several um, compounds per analysis, around 1,000 of compounds or more, depends uh, on the, the, the type of product, from different chemical families, with a, a limit of detection of phentogram. We can see the relation between one gram and phentogram, so the level of the sensitivity is really very low. On this, the case, for example, uh, of the, the, uh, the um, red Doro uh, table wine, we obtained these, uh, these uh, chromatograms uh, from the wine with the microagglomerated cork and the natural cork stopper. We detect around 1,200 compounds 
uh, per sample. Uh, we, in the first moment, we use a statistical tool to, to select uh, and the genetic algorithm to select the compounds that are really important and that um, present some differences between uh, both uh, wines because it's really hard and we need a lot of time uh, to identify and confirm the identification, to really confirm the identification of these compounds. And finally, we select a, a set of uh, 195 uh, compounds. Uh, here it's just an example to show that we can de detect compounds with a very level of sensitivity. Even, for example, if the compounds appear in the same peak, we can use a program of the convolution. And for example, for the natural cork, if an CAM4, a, terpen a terpenic compounds characteristic of, of the, the, the cork, even uh, we only obtain one peak, uh, using this uh, statistical, this, uh, sorry, this uh, processing of um, chromatographic data, we can obtain uh, mass spectrum with high quality that is for us uh, very important to go further and, and then confirm the identification of the compounds. Here uh, we have the, the, the results, so what really is important for you, it's, it's not the, these previous um, uh, details regarding the, the technique, I think that it is more interesting, is look for the results, and here you, use, um, you have a clustering uh, analysis, and we use this uh, chromatic scale with the low concentration, the blue, and high concentration, the red, and we can obtain a, a Two, uh, two, two, two big, uh, two main clusters related with the different uh, bottles from uh, where are using the natural cork or the mi microagglomerated one, and we can obtain these these uh, differentiated uh, clusters. And for example. The, the wine uh, sealed with the natural cork presented, for example, higher, so more, more red color, so higher concentration of uh, esters, higher concentration, for example, of alcohols, higher concentration of terpenic compounds, also higher concentration of norisoprenoids, so we can uh, detect differences uh, between the, both uh, um, both wines, and uh, it's clear that these compounds more related with floral or fitting notes are higher in our higher amount in natural cork, uh, what is uh, really in, li uh, in line with the uh, previous literature. Um, I also uh, want to show that, for example, on the year, we have the, the, the samples from microagglomerated and here from natural. And uh, this, this figure, it's uh, to, to highlight that uh, we observed higher variability between bottles for um, wines uh, sealed with natural cork, what uh, in fact is uh, really expected. Uh, here I selected some, some hasters to, to, to show that uh, we not only use these global statistical tools, we also use univariate analysis to compare uh, compound per compound if, is or not, uh, if they showed or not significant uh, differences. For example, in esters, we observed uh, differences in some esters between both of type of uh, cork, uh, stoppers and the cork, uh, cork, natural cork exhibited higher amount, for example, of these esters, uh, exhibit also higher amount of these um, acids, we, for, for example, for acids, for group of esters, uh, acids, we can also uh, show differences between both uh, stoppers. Uh, we also control the strec strecker aldehydes because the level of these uh, compounds uh, 
um, may be in higher amount under uh, oxidation conditions, but uh, here it's not uh, really uh, observed this, for example, of, of these compounds that are uh, produced from uh, degradation of amino acids are not in our, um, so it's not observed differences between uh, both stoppers or also on these. So the level of oxidation, it's not uh, too high in, in um, in a natural wine with natural cork, which may be explained with the results related with antioxidant uh, activity and phenol compounds, so may promote uh, a balance on this effect. But for example, we observed uh, differences with uh, statistical significance uh, for methionol. Methionol are present in a higher amount in wine with microagglomerated. Uh, um, Stopper, this, this compound are related with this aroma descriptor, boiled potato, and there are some empirical uh, knowledge uh, that the, the micro, some uh, microagglomerated uh, stoppers actually exhibit this type of uh, aroma. Uh, also, we have uh, results related with uh, norisoprenoids, beta, uh, beta demosinone and TDN, and uh, these compounds uh, that are produced from uh, carotenoids are um, present in our significant amount in the uh, natural cork. We also control the terpenic compounds, namely CAM4. CAM4 uh, was only detected in uh, natural cork, uh, wine with, uh, sealed with natural cork, and in general, the different uh, terpenic compounds, monoterpenic and sesquiterpenic compounds are present in our uh, amount in uh, natural cork. Uh, this is also this uh, for, this for um, red wine. For white wine, we have at the moment less data from um, Riesling, but this, because these analyses are under progress, but with the results that you uh, obtain at the moment, we only detect CAM4 in wines uh, sealed with natural cork, and uh, for the, the, the data that you obtain at the moment, this, this uh, um, wine sealed uh, with uh, natural cork exhibit higher amount of uh, terpenic compounds. Uh, this, this is a, a picture that, uh, of the data that we obtain at the moment with Riesling wine, and we can obtain actually two big, uh, two big uh, cluster. One cluster related with natural cork, and another with that is split. Sorry, uh, that is split uh, between synthetic cork and microagglomerated cork. And here we have a mixture. Uh, of uh, different uh, microagglomerated uh, cork, stop, uh, cork stoppers. So these uh, results are under progress and uh, adding more compounds, we can check what we can do. But for example, it's clear that esters are our higher, sorry, higher amount in the natural cork. Uh, the previous slide also showed that terpenes are in our amount, come for only in natural cork stoppers. So in line what we are, uh, observed in our um, assay with the um, red uh, Douro uh, wine. Uh, also differences in specific um, uh, looking for Riesling, our, we can observe uh, significant differences, observe these specific uh, ester compounds. Uh, and right now I move for the uh, topic of phenolic compounds. The phenolic compounds right now are performed in um, uh, Doro red wine. Uh, we observed um, a, a slight, actually a slight difference, but difference with uh, significant uh, statistical significance. Uh, uh, and you observe that higher, uh, uh, slight higher um, antioxidant uh, in natural cork uh, stopper wine. Uh, we uh, study different uh, phenolic chemical family, families, acids, aldehydes, fl uh, flavantyl free holes, flavanones, flavanols, and tocyanins. So uh, we study different uh, families. We also use this, uh, this uh, chromatic scale uh, to, to highlight the, the concentration 
solution is pressed in milligram per milliliter, and uh, we can uh, see that the natural cork uh, showed higher uh, amount of, uh, uh, in general, higher amount of uh, uh, phenolic compounds. Uh, but for example, we look that this microagglomerated, uh, that this cyanine and cyanines is present in our uh, amount in microagglomerate, but in general, all the families are in our uh, amount in uh, natural uh, cork. Uh, for example, here we are um, looking for the, the total here we look for the different uh, compounds, and here we sy systematize uh, the, the data per family, and actually uh, the anthocyanines, the total, are not uh, really different. We can observe some differences when you look for specific compounds, but in general, no. What are in line? with the chromatic results because actually we didn't um, find statistical differences between chromatic parameters in, in both type of wines, but we can uh, observe the uh, significant differences in our families, especially in phenolic acids and flavonol-free uh, um, oils, uh, presenting higher amount in uh, natural wine sealed with natural cork uh, stopper. Uh, so, uh, as a concluding remarks, I, I want to highlight that these, uh, these results uh, allow us to, to study different uh, phenomena that may uh, occur in wine sealed with uh, different uh, type of uh, stoppers. We are studying the, some uh, alterations, some modification that are related with uh, oxidation uh, condition, as for example, the, the, the formation of esters type uh, state, the, the higher amount of uh, norisoprenoids that are coming from uh, carotenoids, also the, the strec, uh, aldehydes uh, reaction, uh, namely the, the formation of um, methyl uh, methionol. We also uh, controlled the level of uh, terpenes uh, and higher, uh, not higher, but only uh, camphor uh, was only detected in uh, wine sealed with uh, natural cork. Uh, on these cases is actually a, a release of a transfer of the compound from the, the stopper uh, to, the, to the wine. Um, uh, and uh, in general, we can uh, observe that the, the, the level of esters are present and those related with these floral and fruity notes are present in our amount in wine sealed with natural cork. Uh, we also uh, observed a slight um, higher uh, value for antioxidant activity and phenolic compounds in cork stopper with um, uh, in wine uh, sealed with the natural cork stopper. This is also very important because if uh, we can observe that maybe right now we don't have the, 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 the data from uh, oxygen, dissolved oxygen, because you are uh, evaluated these two parameters, dissolved oxygen and also the OTR, but uh, th these results, namely those related with volatile compounds, um, uh, suggest higher um, oxidation condition in uh, wine sealed with natural cork, but maybe th this, this data related with phenols and antioxidant uh, activity show that, there are, uh, uh, that they have impact on this balance and not excessive um, oxidation occur on this type of, of wine. So this, this data also uh, show that there are some, uh, that is clear that there are uh, the, this pair wine and uh, stopper uh, have a, a special character. So for example, if you look for uh, red wine for Doro, the, 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 the characteristics, sensorial and physicochemical characteristics of this type of, of um, red wine from Douro with natural of 
or with microagglomerate present differences at sensorial and physical chemical data, and the same was observed for the Riesling with the natural cork stoppers, synthetic or microagglomerated. So differences we can obtain wine with different characteristics, and the producers want to know what uh, we want. And uh, uh, our ultimate objective is to construct this database, and we are constructing this database with the different uh, information from different uh, varieties or blended wines from different blended varieties, different um, stoppers, and the idea is to construct predictive models so uh, according to the characteristics uh, of the wine and combined with the impact of stoppers, we can predict the characteristics of uh, the, the final pair wine and stoppers. So this is our uh, final objective. We are uh, also work with a group from uh, statistical uh, tools that also uh, are working with uh, artificial intelligence to combine all of these and to uh, construct algorithm that can help us to define this and predict the, the, the characteristics of the wine depending on the variety or blended varieties and on the stopper. So thank you for attention. Thank you.